Family of God, y'all doing all right? Good, listen. This is an intercessory prayer. Unplugged. But we plugged in the piano. There are two songs that I like so much. I've been singing for years when it comes to prayer. One is by Larnell Harris. Extraordinary vocal ability. But I heard this one song years ago. Lord, listen to your children pray. Echo. And Lord, send your spirit in this place. Like the world never, never know When the people of the Lord get down to pray Doors are gonna swing open And the walls come tumbling down When the people of the Lord get down to pray is going out. I was talking for the past couple of days. There's a scratch there. But here's another one by um, Hawkins, Tremaine, my favorite. When you pray, everything will be all right. When you pray, everything will work out fine. Just have faith. When you pray, stuff right there. Let's talk about pray. Intercessory prayer to be exact on this here Unplugged. People of God, y'all doing all right? I'm good. I'm so glad that you all are here. This is uh, Floor Walter Jones Unplugged. And tonight I want to focus on not just prayer. This is part two of our our prayer. I guess it's a series now. But we're going to talk about intercessory prayer uh, today on this episode. And uh, how you pray is very important. Listen, the scriptures are very plain, very explicit um, and expressive by saying that men should always pray and not faint. And that means that a man should always be in a state of praying. And praying is a communication uh, to God. It is talking to God. And you don't have to bow your heads. 
close your eyes. You don't have to moan or groan. You don't have to screech or howl. Uh, although um, sometimes you may have to do that based off of the need uh, and the emergency of you calling out to God. And sometimes I've had to scream at God, please help me. But there are people who think that prayer is something that you have to do based off of what you see in church. And that is not true. That you can be walking down the the aisle of a grocery store, the cereal aisle, and just start talking to God. And that is your prayer to him. And it either is coming out of your mouth or you can be like, Anna, is that her name that was in the temple moving her mouth? And they thought she was drunk. You can do, you don't have to move your mouth at all. It could be a silent prayer. It could be a mental prayer. But, but men should always be in a state of prayer because that is you talking to God. And you should always have a wonderful commune with God and a great relationship. So specifically, what do we pray for? Well, in the first show, we talked about how praying for things that are in God's will. We know what our fathers, natural fathers, will want for us or won't. And I've often said that I would never ask my father, and I've never asked him for money so that I can, you know, either smoke cigarettes, get some weed, or smoke some crack. You know, if he gave me some money, if I asked him for money, he'd ask me for what? I'll say I need it for a train ride, for a bus ride to school, or uh, to buy an apple or something, you know. And my father would give it to me, never would turn me down. So when we pray to God, we know what our Father in heaven wants uh, and needs, well, not needs, but want for us. And it's all good. He wants us to prosper, but not prosper to the point where you're asking him for a $70,000 automobile. Uh, I'm not saying that God's not going to give it to you, but why would he give it to you? What do you need it for? This is just something that you want. So Jesus gave us a wonderful template that they give us this day our daily bread and forgive. And then I said on the show, if you just give me the basics in life, I can multiply it with your help. I can multiply it. And if you give me the strength to do things on my own, you give me the initial seed today. in this uh, show, I was talking about generational wealth, passing down the wealth to a child and giving them just enough as seed. And then that seed in that child will grow based off of what the child exposes himself to a seed that's in the ground is exposed to dirt and dark, but there's uh, nutrients that's in the soil that, that causes the, the uh, seed. It gives, it gives the seed nutrients. And then when the water comes down, that's that um, H2O come down and gives the seed more ability. It's exposed. And then when the seed come out of the ground, then the vitamin D in the sun uh, gives it even more life, all right? And so whatever that seed is exposed to will grow. And God gives seed to the sower. <clears throat> We're not talking about giving an offering in church and calling it a seed. We're not into all that seed stuff. Seed is spreading, just spreading stuff. Duh. But, you know, planting is digging a hole. <laughs> so if you're planting a seed in the ground or you're planting a seed into a, a, a person, <clears throat> then that person will be exposed to wealth and riches based off of who he, he or she are around. All right, I'm, I'm going somewhere here. If you're give it, giving a child a, a seed, whether it's a, a not, the knowledge in the child or giving the person uh, $1,000, all right, now you go and multiply it. This is the analogy that Jesus was giving when he was talking about the giving the three, the talents, two took that, and multiplied it, and the one buried it. So that one who buried it left you, came back, and now they, they need to come back home, all right? Because they they buried it, and they they, they uh, knew the the thoughts of the parents. And this is why Jesus made the analogy of this this the talents that was given to that last guy. Notice how the boss was like, and you knew this about me, and you still buried it. If you had knew I was knew I was a shrewd businessman, you would have at least invested it. So uh, our children will take what we have, go out there and and and, and, and just like the prodigal son before he, you knew it, he was getting ready to eat what the pigs are eating, and he realized my father got more at home, so he went back home. Okay, that was that culture. 
reason why I'm bringing all this up is based off of intercessory prayer and how, the how-tos. What are you exactly praying for? When people ask me to pray, and then they tell me what they want me to pray for, I tell them, I'm not praying for that. How is that benefiting you? And how is that benefiting the people in whom you want me to, who are in, involved in this situation you're in? I'm not praying for that. I will pray, though, but I will pray for wisdom, that God gives you wisdom on how to handle this situation. But I'm not going to pray for the specifics that you're asking me for. That right there is the reason why you're in this mess today. So I'm going to ask God to give you wisdom on how to say no, not to always say yes. I'm going to uh, uh, pray on your behalf for the things that you need in life, not so much the things that you want. But the most thing, the most important thing that I'm going to pray for as far as interceding is for salvation. You see, people come up to you and ask you, would you pray for me to do blah, blah, or will you intercede because I need to need that? You really need to be thinking about salvation. Listen, give a man a fish for uh, a fish that you get, and you feed him for a day, that analogy. Well, it's the same way with this prayer. I'm going to keep praying that God would, would deliver you out of this, de deliver you out of that so that you can get back into that. First of all, I don't think God's going to hear my prayer. <clears throat> I know y'all keep saying you have not because you ask not, really. But they also said that you ask amiss. And so I'm, go I'm not going to ask God for something like that, knowing that what, I, what you want and you may get is going to cause you to walk away from God if you even know God. So I typically pray for salvation because notice they said, if you're sick, call for the elders of the church and they will, they will lay hands on you. They pray for you. And if there is any of you who have committed a sin, it shall be forgiven you. That part there is really important uh, because salvation, forgiveness plays a big part in us getting into our different messologies <laughs> In, in our vicissitudes in our lives. So to properly intercede for someone is to have the knowledge to know that salvation is first. Do this person love God if they don't pray that God show his love uh, to them so that they'll know how to now lean on God and not always have to run to somebody else. When people come to me for prayer and, and intercessory, I will pray for them and then I'll say now, I don't need you to talk to God. You see, people sometimes are lazy and they go to their pastors. So the pastors and ministers or whoever you are, you missionaries, you evangelists, all right, or just you don't have no titles. You're just a sister, of, uh, a woman of God. And somebody go to you for prayer and they always call on you. Can you pray for, pray, pray for me? Sometimes you got to stop and say, have you prayed for yourself? Hmm? How close are you to God? You can get just as close to, to God as I am. You need to call God yourself. Talk to him about your issues and problems. I'll still intercede for you, but what I ask God may not be what you want me to ask him for. So you have to use wisdom in intercessory prayer. Quite simply, intercessory prayer is the act of praying on behalf of others. The role of mediator in prayer was prevalent in the Old Testament. In the case of Abraham, Moses, David, Samuel, Hezekiah, Elijah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Christ is pictured in the New Testament as the ultimate intercessor. And because of this, all Christian prayer becomes intercession since it is offered to God through and by Christ. Jesus closed the gap between us and God when he died on the cross because of Jesus' meditation or his mediation, for a better word, we can now intercede in prayer on behalf of other Christians or for the lost, asking God to grant their requests according to his will. For there is, no, there is one God and one mediator between God and man. That man is Christ. That's first Timothy two and five. Who is the, who is that? Who is he that condemns Christ Jesus who died more than that? who was raised to life is at the right hand of the father of God and is also interceding for us constantly in Romans chapter eight thirty four, He's constantly interceding for us. Paul told Timothy, pray for those or intercede for those even in civic 
in, in politics for kings and potentates, prime ministers, government. We like to pray for people in church, but we don't pray for our mayors and our governors. And please, God Almighty, pray for your, for your, your uh, president of the United States. If you can't pray for them, but you're only praying for the peace of Israel, then what are you doing? So if you're going to intercede, don't just intercede for somebody who's part of your circle. Intercede for those people outside of the world. Jesus was the perfect example of intercessory prayer because those people were, were killing him. And he talked to his father and said, Father, forgive him. And if you can't pray that way, then why are you, are, why are you ahead of the intercessory prayer team at your church? A wonderful model of intercessory prayer is found in Daniel chapter 9. It has all the elements of true intercessory prayer. It is in response to the word characterized by fervency and self-denial, identified unselfishly with God's people, strengthened by the confession, dependent on God's character, and has as its goal glory or God's glory. Like Daniel, Christians are to come to God on behalf of others in a heartbroken and re uh, repentant attitude, recognizing their own unworthiness and with a sense of self-denial. Daniel does not say, I have a right to demand this out of you, God, because I am one of your special chosen intercessors. No, he says, I'm a sinner. And, and in fact, I do not have a right to demand anything. True intercessory prayer seeks not only to know God's will and see it fulfilled, but to see it fulfilled whether or not it benefits us. And regardless of what it costs us, true intercessory prayer seeks God's glory. It doesn't seek our own. So the following is only a partial list of those in whom we are to uh, offer intercessory prayer to. All those in authority, which I gave you, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 2. We, we, are, we are to offer it to ministers, which is Philippians 1.19. To Jerusalem, which is Psalms 122 and 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Make, uh, may they be secure. We are to uh, pray for our friends, Job 42 and 8. We are to pray for our countrymen, Romans 9, chapter, uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 1. We are to pray for the sick, James 5.14. We are to pray for our enemies, Jeremiah 29 and 7. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find welfare. You understand? Also pray for those who persecute you, Matthew chapter 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We also pray for those who forsake us. Second Timothy four sixteen. At my first uh, defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. And then we are to pray for all men. First Timothy chapter two one. First of all, then I urge this, uh, that supplications and prayers, intercessions, uh, and uh, thanksgiving be made for all people. You get it. Those are the people you should be praying for. Don't just pray for people you know at your church. There is an erroneous idea in contemporary Christianity that those who offer up intercessory prayers are a special class of superior Christians called by God to a specific ministry to intercede. The Bible is clear that all Christians are called to be intercessors. All Christians have the Holy Spirit in their heart. And just as he, he intercedes for us in accordance to with the will of God, Romans chapter 8, 26, we are to intercede for one another. This is not a private limited to an exclusive Christian elite group. This is the command to all. In fact, not to intercede for others is sin. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. First Samuel 12 and 23. Certainly, Peter and Paul, when asked others to intercede for them, did not limit their request to those with a special calling to intercessor. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Acts chapter 12 and 5. 
Notice it was the whole church that prayed for him, not just those with gift of intercession. In Ephesians 6.16, Paul exhorts the Ephesians believers, all of them, on the fundamentals of the Christian life, which includes intercession. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, they said, uh, clearly intercession is part of the Christian life for all believers, all. Paul sought prayer on his behalf from all the Roman believers in Romans chapter 15 and 30. He also urged the Colossians to intercede for him in Colossians 4, 2 to 3. Nowhere in any biblical request for intercession is there any indication that only a certain group of people could intercede. On the contrary, those who seek others to intercede for them can use all the help they can get. And the idea that intercession is the pride or the privilege and calling of only some Christians is without biblical basis. And worse, it is a destructive idea that often leads to pride and sense of superiority. And you all are praising these people. You can't even touch them. You got to bow to them, kiss their ring and, and what have you, because they're the only ones that can reach God. And what you've done was you brought the church back into a temple a talk, an environment where there's a veil there and you, could, you, you can only go to these people because those people are behind the veil. God calls all Christians to be intercessors. It is God's desire that every believer be active in intercessory prayer. It's a wonderful and exalted privilege we have in being able to come boldly before the throne of the Almighty God with our prayers and our requests. And make your request known unto God who hears you and he'll either say yes he'll say no or he'll say not right now and you have to know and trust that God heard you before you even spoke and while you were yet speaking this is eschatological speaking here but while you're yet speaking he is answering it so do know the intercessory prayers falls off and be wise in your requests. And be wise in how you answer the requests of others, okay? I think it's wonderful that, that you even want to even do this for someone. Because guess what? You want someone to do this for you as well. Be sure and share this with somebody who may need to hear it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button so the people, you can share the gospel all over the world by doing that. Love your neighbor as you love yourself and they'll know that you're my disciple by your love not so of the Jones disciple but Jesus Christ God thank you for your love for your grace I intercede for on behalf of these people here who needed the answer and I'm hoping that they got it tonight move into their homes show them the wisdom and by all means save them if they're not we love you God we give your name to praise in Jesus name and God we'll see you later on at another time, so Walter Jones, unplugged.